Well, hello, this is Peter Combs from Bitemout.com and P.L. Combs Asian Art in Gloucester, Massachusetts. And today is January 29th, 2021, and this is our weekly video. As you can see, I'm not in my usual place this week. I'm up in uh, New Hampshire at our house up here. It's snowy, five degrees this morning when we got up, pretty chilly, and uh, a bit of snow on the ground, as you, as you'll be, you'll be, as you saw. Uh, one of the things I wanted to bring up this morning was during the week, we had a number of inquiries about a sale that's taking place on eBay uh, by uh, Joni's up in Canada. And a number of the items on there uh, had, had been asked about uh, what we thought of them. And one of them was this. It was this uh, silver and gold inlaid um, who form archaic bronze it's being listed as an 18th century bronze and so forth. It is an 18th century bronze. It's actually a very nice one. And uh, currently, it's up to about uh, $8,000. It's got uh, three days left to go. And uh, this is sort of a lesson in, in listing and how you probably shouldn't list things. Uh, Joni's in the description here did something I don't quite understand. Um, and, and I'll show you why in a minute. In the listing, they said that the, the vase had been um, uh, previously uh, scheduled to go to auction in uh, New York, right here. This face is an important Chinese works of art sale, um, but due to delays, we've been asked to offer the, piece, the, the this piece. And the problem is, is that it wasn't a sale in New York, and there it is. This was in the September sale that was uh, online. We covered it. We did the video on it. It was a very good sale. It was during Asia Week, and it didn't sell. It failed to make its reserve of uh, uh, whatever it was. I don't know what the reserve was, but the estimate was fifteen to twenty thousand dollars. This is the exact same vase that was offered at Sotheby's uh, five, six months, five months ago. And uh, here they have it, and they're, they're saying for some odd reason that, that, that it wasn't in the sale. And uh, this wasn't a hard thing to find. I, I, it looked familiar to me, so I just gave it a quick Google search through Sotheby's, and up it came. So uh, if you're listing stuff, don't, don't play games with the history of a piece, because it's too easy to find out the real history. They should have shown that it was offered in New York and it didn't sell. And let it go for what it's going to. It's probably going to do just fine. It'll probably bring ten or twelve thousand dollars, maybe thirteen thousand, and that's great. But there's no need to uh, uh, gild the lilies quite, you know, to sh shade it quite that way. It was just a. I don't understand what they do sometimes up there. And the other thing I wanted to mention, there are some other pieces in there that seem to be getting a lot of traction, and uh, they have good things. They have a few good things at the sale, but there's a lot of things that are being misdated. This one, they unfortunately listed it as uh, being probably Republic period or late Qing. It's not, in my opinion, it's a modern piece. Um, this particular bronze is in the sale. Um, it looks to be uh, uh, late Republic or, or even modern by, by the sharpness of some of the edges and the way it's done, the way the mark is done and so forth. Uh, this is being listed as uh, uh, 17th or 18th century Wan Wali. It's not. It's a Republic period uh, carving, late Qing to Republic. It's perfectly nice. There's no reason to, 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 to say that it's something otherwise. And on and on, they have this listed as Warring States period. It's not. It's brand new. It's a total copy. And it frankly, looks a little bit ridiculous. And uh, this is listed as a 18th century Qin Lung vase. Clearly not. It's a uh, early Republic period vase. Here's a picture of the bottom of it. And those that you that buy uh, monochromes recognize that immediately as not being 18th century, judging by the way the glaze looks and the way the, the base and the foot rim is done. And again, this uh, being listed as 18th century. And it's a very nice uh, uh, Lang Yao vase. There's nothing wrong with it, but it's Republic. It's not, it's not in my opinion, uh, a, a terribly old one. And they have this, a nice, uh, uh, probably Republic late Qing uh, uh, bronze, and it's being described as being Ming. It's not. It's Ming style, clearly, but it's not Ming. And you just look at the back of it, and you see all these little lines running across it and the application of patina that was put onto it. They used to patinate them to make them look old. And that's what it is, and there's nothing wrong with it. It's perfectly nice. It's a foot tall. It's a big one. And uh, a lot of people have spotted that it's probably not what they suggest, but I don't know why... Um, uh, they do that if they put Ming Dynasty and things, and they just they just start and they and they and they, they should know better. Same for this uh, the the uh, scholar's hidden drawer uh, brush tray. It's it's a it's a Republic tray. It's very nicely done, um, but it's 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 not Ming anything, and uh, this is not a Yuan Dynasty uh, vase. It is a uh, actually a copy of one. It's very well done, 
and we're at a yawn dynasty example you know everybody knows what they sell for they go into six figures and uh this uh yijiao style sung bowl is uh, up to 500 dollars if you're bidding on it i'm going to suggest you probably not go any further it is a 20th century bowl pretty clearly uh if you blow it up all right but uh, I, I don't know why sellers do this. Uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's the money, I guess, I don't know. But uh, just uh, keep in mind that uh, sometimes uh, listings aren't quite the way they should be. And um, it's unfortunate. Uh, I, don't, I don't know why they do that. But at uh, any rate, that's, that's the deal. And uh, let's get on to the weekly newsletter. But just when you're doing your own listings on, on eBay or other places, don't, don't make up provenances or, or, or give a, up a history that can be easily checked and shown not to be the to the truth uh, because it just hurts the rest of your listings. Joni says a ton of stuff up there. They have some good export pieces. We're going to have some of the pieces in the newsletter this week. We'll have that bronze in the newsletter because it's still a good bronze. Uh, but I, I don't understand the motivation behind um, uh, what we just looked at. I just, it, it, it mystifies me. All right, now let's get on with it. Now, the thing that I wanted to talk about was we had some good results this week over on the, on the global member pages, some interesting results too. And I wanted to just quickly go through them to, to share how things went. This was a, a very nice um, uh, 18th century uh, incense burner with a later lid on it, but it was beautifully done. Uh, nice, nice example. And this was the Freeman sale. We're going to cover Freeman's first. It went for $2,600, which I think was a perfectly fair price for that. That was a nice piece. And if one of you got it, good going. <clears throat> a good looking thing. Now, uh, this one. This is interesting. This was a pair of Famille Rose uh, 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 vases, late Qing, second half of the 19th century uh, vases that were up. They were about 10 inches tall, very pretty, nicely done, uh, matched pair, as you can see, in a good size. And they ended up selling for $1,300. And this was Freeman's. And what was interesting was in the, in the, in the same week, also this week, there was a pair, a similar look, somewhat similar t a period pair, both, again, second half of the 19th century, that were at these were at Heinemann's in in uh, California in, in Chicago rather Illinois, they were a bit bigger. The other pair was ten inches. They sold for uh, what was the exact price? Sixteen hundred, thirteen hundred. Here's a bigger pair uh, by about six inches. They sold for thirty-seven fifty. So uh, you add five or six inches onto these uh, these moon flasks, and the prices, as you can see, rise uh, exponentially by almost you know two and a half times, three times as much. It has a huge impact on value. Uh, and these were very nice. This was a nice looking pair, nice uh, court scene, good looking enamels. And the chimeras were particularly well modeled all through here. Love the way they were done. Very serpentine looking. And, and the vases looked to be in decent shape. That was a nice thing. And then over to uh, this. This was that wa that ink, pen and ink drawing that I, I mentioned uh, that we had added uh, a week or two ago. I just thought it was just a wonderful um, uh, ink drawing of butterflies. There's several of them down here. A nice inscription on the side, all framed, ready to go. It had a very reasonable estimate, as I recall. It was a modest estimate of uh, eight to twelve hundred dollars. I thought that was very fair, and in the end, it did quite well. It brought sixteen hundred, but a good buy. That was still a nice, nice watercolor, beautifully painted, just beautifully painted, and and it may have been in an album at some point in its life when it first started. Okay, and then over to this, we had mentioned this last week. It, it closed out on the twenty sixth. A couple of days ago, we had we had shown this uh, when it was first added to the to the global member pages because I thought it was just such a wonderful uh, bronze, Japanese bronze with carp all over it, uh, very nicely done. I love the pine trees, and the effect of this was nice because it was sort of the, the fish are swimming, and as you've often seen in in, in Japanese uh, uh, on porcelain dishes and on, on paintings and scrolls, they, one of the popular scenes is that they'll show pine trees hanging out over water. Uh, with fish in it presumably and here's a scene of pine trees the branches hanging over with the fish underneath it swimming about and uh the, uh, the meiji period uh, bronze casters in particular were very very good at this um they did lots of these relief work pieces sometimes you'll see them with the carp and, and they'll have glass eyes or uh, uh semi-precious stones inset into the eyes of the fish but uh this is this was a very nice one the patina on it seemed to be undisturbed and very very good and I think somebody got a good buy. This looked like a nice buy. It was 15 inches tall, and it went for $800. And this was at Freeman's in uh, Philadelphia. They had a good sale. They had a few things that were very questionable. But but in general, they had some nice items. And uh, if you went through it and you you left bids uh, uh, through the sale, you, you probably got a few things that were pretty nice. 
And the other thing I wanted to follow up on also was the uh, sale that took place at Skinner's of the collection of Carl Crossman. He was the uh, famous uh, 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 scholar on China trade porcelain. He wrote the book on the China trade, and uh, he retired. He, he lived up here. I knew Carl pretty well. And uh, he retired up here a number of years ago after working with Northeast Auctions. Uh, he sort of retired from the art world. He'd worked with museums. He owned a big gallery in Boston. Then he sort of retired for a while. And Northeast Auctions brought him. Uh, Ron Bourgeau was a good friend of his and asked him if he'd help him uh, put together annual China trade sales, which they did. And the Northeast Auctions China trade sales were, were sort of an annual event. They were held every summer. Great auctions. I bought a number of things from that those sales. I even bought things that belonged to Carl from that sales because occasionally he'd throw in things. And toward the time when he was getting ready to move to Florida, he put a number of things that he'd owned, um, one, of, uh, one of which was a painting that had been on loan to the PBD Essex Museum for many years um, that I actually did buy. And uh, uh, it, he went off to Florida to enjoy his retirement, and he took a lot of things with him. And, and one of them was, was this, this very nice uh, Dewa uh, incense burner. And in typical Skinner fashion, this was a nice-looking little incense burner, nice one. Good or old one. Um, they didn't use very good light on shooting this, unfortunately. Um, but at any rate, uh, uh, the the piece had a modest estimate. It was estimated at uh, three to five hundred dollars, and ended up selling for thirty three hundred seventy five, which looks to be about the right price. Uh, Skinner's is notorious for having very low estimates, um, um, or I don't I don't know how they they figure it, but. They put really low estimates on things that tend to go very, very high. I've seen things estimated at Skinner's at eight to twelve hundred that end up selling for over a hundred thousand, two hundred thousand even. But at any rate, um, uh, let's see. Then there was this this lot of Dewa uh, figures. There was a whole bunch of them. This was a nice little lot, and uh, uh, it was estimated at three to five hundred dollars and ended up selling for one thousand dollars. But there were some nice pieces in here, some nice soft uh, glazed pieces, a nice looking uh, bird. You got this this early jar. This that, that's an early one, an 18th century jar with lid, and so forth. And then some 20th century pieces thrown in, but high quality. And you can see a couple of them have restorations on them, but a nice one. And this little seal at the bottom, this right in the center, that was a nice little piece. And uh, somebody paid a thousand dollars for the lot. Okay. And then here the Dewa, um, uh, not the Dewa, the the Yixing uh, teapots. Um, are just wonderful, and they were estimated again very modestly, five to seven hundred dollars. The lot ended up selling for uh, uh, fifty nine hundred and thirty eight. But there were some nice uh, forms in there, and there were a number of them that were older than they looked, I suspect, and uh, that's what brought the price. And lastly, was the uh, lot of bronzes. Uh, as I said a couple of weeks ago, check these bronzes out because I'm going to. A couple of them look pretty good to me, and to check them out, they they yeah they've been polished, but a couple of them look pretty old. And uh, obviously, some people did because the estimate on the on the lot was uh, very reasonable, four to six hundred dollars. And the lot of eight bronzes went way through that and ended up selling for eighty one hundred and twenty five, which means some people examined them and then uh, came up with a uh, a much different opinion of their value. So that's the way it goes sometimes. By the way, if you hear a little barking in the background, that's one of my dogs. Hi, Skipper. It's okay, Skipper. Yeah. Hi. Yeah. He's. He wants to go out again. I don't know why. He's been in and out 10 times today, and it's, it's z zero outside practically. All right. Now, a couple of things are coming up that are closing. This is at Carlo Bonte's auctions uh, over in um, uh, in Belgium. Uh, Nice-looking uh, May Ping base, flambe glaze. It's, it's not an 18th century one, I don't think. I think it's probably a 19th century one, but it has a very, very attractive glaze, and it's a wonderful shape. And uh, the estimate is three to 500 euros. Uh, there's no bids. It opens in 20 days. So you have plenty of time to check it out. But one of the things I wanted to point out that is in Carlo Bonte's auctions, if you have, if you have an interest in owning a really great pair of large uh, 19th century uh, vases, these are fabulous looking. And um, the, these vases measure, measure 87 centimeters tall, so basically three feet tall, okay, but roughly, okay. And if you blow this picture up, um, and get a look at them. This is an absolutely elegant, stupendous pair of vases. Nice celadon ground, beautiful Famille rose enamels. And notice the condition of the, uh, 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 the uh, gilding all through here and around the shoulder. All of the gilding looks to be in absolutely stunning condition, um, almost untouched, almost untouched from what I can see. Um, these vases have been very, very well cared for, very powerfully done foo lion, um, uh, uh, an adult and a young foo lion here, 
and then you have this wonderful ribbon technique. This 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 method you've seen on uh, 18th century pieces. It became sort of popular in the in the Qinlong period, where they would do these applied ribbons onto the bodies of vases and a slight ruffle rim, but not the heavy heavy ruffle rim that they they tended to do later. Skipper, take it easy over there. You want to come over here? Come here, Skipper. He doesn't want to come over. He wants to sit by the door and growl. Okay. Uh, anyway, and it has figures on it and just a, a, a great looking pair of bases. Um, they have a, a 4,500 euro opening bid and uh, with a six to $8,000 estimate. And uh, I think that's very reasonable actually for, for this pair. These are very, very big. Uh, and in the past, when we've reviewed auctions um, in the Netherlands and, and in, in New York and so forth, when they've had these big bases, they often bring, um, you know, eight to twelve to fifteen thousand dollars in this size, especially in this quality. The quality is absolutely great. So uh, if you if you have an interest in them, uh, chase it down. They have a tiny, 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 tiny. It looks like hole in the bottom. And I, these holes, by the way, are not for making lamps. Um, those little sets of holes on there were they, they were these were mounted on stands, and they sometimes on big bases so they wouldn't tip over or they wanted to stay put would drill tiny holes in them and run a bolt through and then set it onto a stand so that it wouldn't uh, wouldn't tip. All right, but that that it doesn't matter. They're such a good looking pair. So that's it. All right. So if you if you like them, uh, consider chasing them down. They're worth it. All right. Now over to the newsletter page. Let's see here. Uh, let the page load. There we go. Uh, things that closed last week. These were on, this was over in Katowicki. I think this was a very good buy for someone. 500 euros for this vase. And we talked about it. It's 45 centimeters tall, so it's uh, roughly 18 inches in height. Very attractively done. Uh, what I liked about these was that um, this type of vase, is, as we said last week, is a fairly typical type. But the quality of this is much higher, much, much, much higher than the average uh, done with this um, this sort of faux bronze glaze technique where they applied this brown uh, a dry finish onto it uh, to make it sort of simulate bronze and uh, but beautifully done and the enameling was excellent on this pair on this vase rather it's not a pair and ended up selling for 500 euros uh, on the nose which I think I thought the estimate was very reasonable and I think the selling price on that was very reasonable I, I would I sort of was thinking these base, this vase should bring 800 to 1100 dollars eight eight to eleven hundred euros rather it's a it's a very very attractive type and maybe it's because it's of a, a type that isn't typically that high quality a lot of people might have looked past it but it was an exemplary example uh, form and then on to this the chinese export uh, punch bowl uh, a, a well-known type this is a well-known type of bowl it's sort of a stock pattern that they did on these but they did them in varying qualities and the quality of this bowl was the, among the very best uh, very, very finely done, Rococo edging all around it, nice, crisp uh, enamels, beautiful diaper pattern with very, very little wear, uh, filling in the uh, spaces in between. Might have had a couple of little nicks in it, but it was a good-looking ball, and it had the uh, interior, this very elaborate interior that they only did on the better examples when they they really, really dressed it up and then went around the, the outside with sort of a framework to it and so forth. Do you want to go out again? Okay, I gotta let my dog out again. Come on, 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 Sorry about that. He's been in and out probably a dozen times today. I don't know what he, he's found something in the woods up here. I don't know what. <laughs> All right. And uh, this, anyway, this was a wonderful bowl. Looked to be in good shape and uh, ended up selling for 850 euros or just a little over $1,000 U.S. currency. Uh, nice looking example. And then on to this. You may remember this. This, this uh, moon flask, this Famille June moon flask went through Katowicki a couple of weeks ago and ended up selling or it didn't sell it. It didn't make its reserve, which was about 1,900 euros. And I, I don't know what the, what happened was that they decided that we're going to put it up again because they liked it. It's a nice, nice moon flash. There's nothing wrong with it. Um, beautifully done, beautifully enameled. Uh, it's got humans on, people on one side and, and flowers and so forth on the other. Uh, looked pretty good all the way around. Nice looking foot on it for 19th century pot. Ended up, this time it did sell. It went for 2,400 euros or on the upper end of its estimate, which which is about where I, I sort of thought it would bring last time around, but it didn't for some reason, who knows. And uh, they put it up again. It was 48 uh, centimeters tall, or uh, roughly 19, 19 or so inches. 
but a nice big one and uh, 2,400 euros bought it. Okay, and then over to this was this uh, Batavia type ball, a uh, nice early one, 22 centimeters in diameter or roughly around, uh, what's that, about seven and a half, eight inches or so, and uh, ended up selling for 440 euros, Kung Chi period, nice example. And I think 440 euros was fine. The estimate was higher, five to eight, 600 euros, which was, um, I think, perfectly fine as well. And I think that was a good buy for someone. I think that was a nice buy. And I like the surface on this. This bowl had that had that the Batavia brown brown surface on it, but it wasn't very very glossy. It's sort of a nice soft matte finish, which helped the uh, the cartouches and the and the enamel decoration stand out a bit more, um, which makes it I think rather attractive. Okay, now moseying on over to this. This was on there. This big pear shaped crackleware relief uh, work uh, a vase with. Um, uh, uh, people on it. There it is, horses. There are my horses. And, but, but these would be cast, the, the body would have these sort of, um, the figures would all be in relief, and then they would be done in cobalt blue. And then you have that nice crackle glaze. This is a 19th century pot, second half of the 19th century probably. Nicely done. You got that brown dressing on the bottom, so yeah, late, late, mid to late 19th century. But a good looking pot, very attractive. And it did well. It ended up selling for uh, 1,600 euros. Um, which was not a huge surprise. These relief work pieces are popular, and this was big. Most of these pear-shaped bases that you see in this shape are, are, are under 12 inches. They tend to be on the smallish sides. This was a big one, 46 centimeters, so it was, a, it was over, over um, uh, 18 inches tall, um, which makes it rather unusual and, um, and uh, a, a bit of a complex piece to, to make, so it brought a bit more. Okay, now um, get this page to load. There we go. This, this uh, very very nice um, uh, uh, late Ming early Qing dynasty silk, um, uh, a beautiful example. This is on eBay right now, and uh, let's see. We get this window to close up. There it is. Um, it's, it hasn't closed yet. It's got 88 bids. It's up to twenty thousand dollars. It closes in seven hours. It closes later on today. It will be in the newsletter. I'm going to put it in there because it's, it, that way you can go and check it. But uh, this is quite a rare thing, and uh, it was it was it's of decent size. Uh, it is 206 by 134 centimeters, so it's in, uh, 35. It's about four feet by five feet, something like that. So it's a it's a big textile. It's a nice big one, and it's very old uh, uh, on cut on cut silk and uh, just. A really lovely example, and it's, as I said, it's up to twenty thousand dollars. We'll see where it ends up. Um, when it, when prices like this typically happen on here on eBay, for those of you that are not that familiar with it, those of you that you are familiar, you already know this. Once prices get up around eight or ten thousand um, dollars, the, the buyers, particularly in China, start to reach out to other buyers. They start to reach out to other collectors, and they they need they start getting second opinions, and they really start working on it uh, to make sure that they're making a good decision. And uh, generally, when you get up into the twenty thousand dollar range, it means that um, it's been uh, it's been well identified and accurate. I think when we put it in the newsletter last week, it was at, at, at next to nothing. I think it was at a couple of hundred bucks or something. But anyway, it'll get there. We'll see what it brings. We'll talk about it next week. But right now, it's at twenty thousand dollars. And uh, let's see, let's see if we have a lot of repeat bidders on here. Uh, okay, you got one guy. He. He bid it incrementally up from 14,000, same bidder, um, up to uh, 19,000. But the winning bid is still this guy right here. Uh, he has 129 feedbacks. And uh, there's, there's, there's some back and forth here in the lower numbers. So we'll see where that goes. But it seems like two guys have locked onto this thing and, and uh, are going to chase it to the moon. Um, one of the things that came up about, about uh, bidders and low feedback, I think I saw it on the, uh, on the comments under the videos from last week, um, often, you, if you look at if you look at the, uh, the the bidders on eBay these days, you can't see who they are anymore. They 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 block those out for privacy consideration. So, but what you can, privacy concerns. But what you can see is how many feedbacks they have. And often, buyers in China, you'll see only have one or two or three or four feedbacks. And the reason for this is partly, uh, and often the case, it's because so many of them just don't pay their bills, and they end up eventually they, they end up getting maybe ten or twenty feedbacks. And then they get booted off because they have too many non-payment strikes. So they come back and create a whole new account. So sometimes you'll have a, 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 you'll have multiple buyers from China on there, and you'll see lists of 
and they're bidding serious money, you know, but they only have one or two feedbacks, feedbacks in their, and there are, you know, maybe, maybe five or six or seven of them. And the reason is that they have to keep creating new accounts because they keep getting kicked off for non-payment. All right. That's the general problem. And uh, cause we used to sell a lot on here and when we, we had problems with people who didn't pay their bills. This is what we were told by eBay. All right. There was a fellow in Shanghai years ago, legendarily had over a hundred eBay accounts because he just kept getting booted off so often. All right. And eBay will, will not address that situation for any reason uh, by just blocking the IP address. Uh, and then over here to this, this quartz uh, carving, this is lovely or late 19th century. You've seen them before. Often these are made into table lamps, uh, but this is a, a nice looking one. And, um, uh, Nice looking pair. They, they sold for just $89, which I think was an absolutely terrific buy. I think that was, those are lovely. They were real and just um, absolutely fine as far as I'm concerned. And then over here to this, this uh, 19th century, probably early 19th century, overlaid uh, snuff bottle in red overlaid glass. And this is the, the famous squirrel in the vine with the grapes pattern. You see it on, on transitional period, Utsai pieces. You see it on porcelain fairly often. And here it is. It's been added on to this uh, uh, piece of uh, snuff bottle. And it's nicely polished, nice looking old bottle, uh, good details, probably, you know, Ching, but uh, still, it did well. It brought $576. Okay. And then hopping over to this one was that uh, pear-shaped uh, brown dressing glazed vase that had the uh, Chin Lung mark on the bottom. I didn't think it was Chin Lung. Um, here's a very similar type right here that ended up selling for $774 at a Sotheby sale that they included in the listing. Um, the form was known. There's often debate about uh, whether these are copies or these are modern or not. I don't think so. The foot rim looked fine on it to me. The glaze looked good, little bits of pitting, the tone, that slightly bluish tone on the inside, and the foot rim looked fine to me. And the inside of it looks good, but that looks perfectly okay in my eye. And uh, I guess a lot of people got excited about it, or maybe a couple of people thought it was actually Chin Lung. Um, and they ended up bidding it up and it ended up selling for $2,399, which, which is a bit more than I thought. I think I said last week it should bring about around eight or so hundred. Uh, but uh, if, if you get a couple of people that buy them, believe the mark, um, they, will, uh, they will chase things to uh, irrational levels sometimes, especially if they could find an authentic one that looks somewhat similar, they'll go with it. But anyway, uh, and then over to this. This was a very, very pretty mid-19th, first half of the 19th century Famille Rose vase. Nice gold mass candles. It was around 15 or so, so inches tall. Uh, had, had been drilled out as a lamp at one point, but still ended up selling for $788 US. This was a uh, Tofi, a seller over in Paris that you know, they get some nice porcelain from time to time. A while ago, you may remember they had the um, they had a nice collection of uh, 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 Kangxi and transitional pieces. Um, and they had a very, very early Dewa uh, teapot with a uh, Ming Dynasty with a bridge handle on it. It was all impressed. Hold on a second. My dog needs to come back in again. Ah. Come on, buddy. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, there you go. <clears throat> Letting the dogs in and out. It's it's an all-day event here. Anyway. Uh, one of them has hardly gone out today. All is just she's just laying on the couch watching the fireplace. At any rate, all right. So now, so that was a good buy. That was a nice looking base, uh, very well done, very nicely decorated. And then over to this was that pair of uh, very large rock crystal carvings of Yin's or, or ladies attendants that uh, Josh Chamberlain had over at uh, you know Juice One Four Nine Nine. Um, last week, and I, I just loved them, and they and I wondered what they were going to bring because they were so unusually large, and they were probably late Qing, early Republic period because that's when most of these stone carvings of this type were done. They did them in jadeite, they did them in in uh, 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 pig quartz, they did them in rock crystal, and uh, this uh, pair brought twenty seven hundred and sixteen dollars. They did just fine, very attractive, but unusually large. I think these were over twenty twenty five inches tall, nice big ones. And then over here to this, Josh also had this uh, ormolu mount, gilt ormolu mounted Kung Shi vase. I think the mounts were later, uh, early 20th century maybe, or something like that, because they were still doing them. It was very fashionable in France to do them this way and in England. But these were, this was a very nice looking vase. And uh, in the end, it did just fine. It brought $2,618. And then pop over to this one. 
uh, there, this, this little uh, uh, death ski. Um, th this was a, a charming one. It was a, 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 a lacquered carved uh, with a recumbent foo lion. Uh, beautifully done. Very nice colors on this. Absolutely. I love the patina on this thing. This seller gets some nice things. There's a, another an overview of it with gilt lacquer that has some wear through it. And they burnish these down to highlight the surfaces a bit and do all that good stuff. And uh, this was a nice one. And uh, there's a shot of it from above, shot it from that side. Good photographs. And there's the holes for the uh, for the ropes to go through. And uh, it ended up selling for $402 U.S., and I think that was a wonderful buy. I think that for what it is, a charming example like that, um, Edo period, uh, 19th century Edo period, 1800 or so, 1850, uh, but excellent quality, and somebody picked it up for $402. Okay, and then over to this, they also had this up, the seated uh, Tibetan, uh, uh, probably copper bronze alloy uh, uh, figure, uh, seated figure. Nicely done, good surface on it, uh, liked it a great deal, and it ended up selling for $5,563, which is fine. And then they also had this, this little ear handle uh, uh, bronze incense burner, nice old one. Uh, the surface looks like it maybe had been polished a couple of times during its life, but not, not in the last uh, 100 or so years anyway. They used to polish bronzes all the time. And uh, this brought $2,606, 18th century, uh, looks fine for that period to me. But a very nice form, very nice shape, very elegant, and, and not overly large. Nice size, nice nice personal size. And then they had the recumbent jade horse, uh, 18th century jade, greenish-white jade, uh, beautiful detail and decoration uh, around, the, around the mane and all this stuff. The tail was nicely uh, articulated. And uh, they, they shot good pictures of it, so you get a good sense of the color. And uh, it had a 20th century stand that was made for it. I don't think that's an old stand, but uh, it was made to fit the, the hooves. And you notice underneath, with the area you can't see, it's beautifully carved. They show all the details of the hoof and so forth. And uh, in the end, it did pretty well at about $2,332, which is, I think, right about around the range we thought it would, it would go, somewhere in the two to $3,000 range. Uh, but a nice, nice little jade, nice little classic jade. And a lot of those were brought into Europe, you know, during the uh, during the early 20th century, and they were they're almost treated as like 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 uh, little gifts to give out to people they, because they weren't very expensive then. Now there wasn't a huge amount of interest in, in 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 Qing Dynasty jades in the early part of the 20th century. They weren't considered to be worth very much, and even up until the 1950s, you could buy uh, uh, from from Spinks and some of the top galleries in England in the 1950s and 60s. For a few hundred dollars, you could buy a, a, a jade from them uh, that, that today would be worth, uh, you know, uh, for three or four hundred dollars. Then that today would be worth three or four hundred thousand. Uh, it was a very good time to buy them. And then on to this, this early 20th century uh, leaf drawing, uh, page drawing of uh, flowers. I just thought this was very, very nice. It was a good, genuine um, uh, late Qing, early Republic period painting. <clears throat> Looked absolutely fine to me. And uh, ended up selling very modestly, $122. Whoever got that, bravo. I hope one of you got it because that was a nice buy um, and uh, uh, easy enough to get framed. It's already matted. There you go. And so for a, a simple frame, would treat it very, very well. And then on to this, this nice pair of, um, of uh, female rose. They call them Femi Ver because it's a, sort of a dominant uh, green color in them, done about 1850 or 1880. They were, uh, let's see how big they were. They, put, they always put it away at the bottom, 30 centimeters, so 12 inches tall. And uh, a lot of people like these. And uh, it's not a very rare type, but they're good looking. Nice colors on them. Uh, the, 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 the figures and the landscape were nicely done. Uh, good details all the way through here. But you know the way, this, these, the way these enamels are applied, this, this, this sort of lightly, lightly enameled, not that heavy, thick Femil Rose enamel and Femi Ver enamels, but a little lighter with a, a sort of a, a greenish yellow Femi June ground around them. Uh, they ended up selling for $713, a strong price for those. All right, so I guess a number of people really liked them. They had 48 bids. And then over here to this, the folks up at uh, the Shangri-La guys over at um, Ceramics and Collectibles over in the Netherlands had this very nice looking uh, a blue and white dish with the fisherman, classical scene again with the willow trees hanging out over the water. Absolutely lovely transitional piece made for the Japanese market, of course. And uh, But the, what I liked particularly about these was the way the, 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 the willow trees were drawn. 
they have a real sense of movement to them, the sort of a, a beautiful flow in the branches and the leaves. And uh, the, the fisherman is sitting there smiling uh, in his boat. He's got his net behind him and so forth. It's just a nice scene. And you see this scene often. It was a well-known pattern. Ended up selling for $277. All right. Now, let's head over to uh, what's coming up in the next couple of days. All right. <clears throat> the page will load. Okay. We're, in the hand, we're, we're on a little wobbly Wi-Fi up here. So sometimes the pages don't load very quickly. There we go. Um, there we are. This is, a, 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 I think, a, a nifty painting. Jo this is Joni's Up in Canada has this, the, the people that had the bronze we talked at the beginning about. Is this very nice uh, early 20th century late Qing watercolor of a, uh, of a, a sort of a, a, you know, a loose flesh uh, elephant. I love this. I love the way the elephant is done, and they provide a very nice detailed shot where you can show an attendant uh, coming through with a, with a carrying an archaic patinated bronze with flowers coming out of it and this, this absolutely charming elephant behind it. it. looks like an elder elephant. Just love this. And it's up to $39. It's only got 13 bids, closed in a few days. Uh, that's a lovely watercolor. So you, you might want to, if you like Chinese paintings, that's one I think worth going after. I think it's a great thing, and it will be not easily easy to frame because, as I said, it's already matted and ready to go. And then this, this pith painting. Pith paintings come in a huge range of qualities and, and, and so forth. Some of them are, are pretty pretty poor. They're just quick export pieces they sold in curio shops at Canton. This is a particularly nice one. Um, it is not an auction lot. This is a fixed price thing. But the shading and the work on this is particularly good. All right. Just very, very good. Very nicely done. And it's that classic, the, the, the vase with the flowers, with the loop handle. And you see, them, you see this pattern also done in underglazed blue and with Famille Rose enamels on 18th century plates in particular. It's a very famous pattern. And here it is on Pith. It's got to buy it now at $425 and make an offer. Um, I don't think $425 is bad for that at all. It's all framed. It sort of has a nice frame with a, it looks like some sort of a, a cloth mat or a simple paper mat with a nice fillet around it. Um, it, it's about 250 bucks worth of frame sitting there. Uh, you know, make an offer on the thing if you like pith paintings, because this, I think, is a very nice one. It even has an old label on the back of the uh, retail store that handled it. Uh, Paul Victorious, Charlottesville, Virginia. And that looks like it's a label probably from the 50s or the 60s, but a nice-looking painting. And uh, if you could, you know, 425 is okay for it. If you can pick it up for 350 it's even better. All right, yeah, especially if you're collecting. Skipper, come here. All right, also closing um, is this very unusual and very nice Yongshan period from Milrose Vase. This closes later today. We'll review it next week to see what it brings. It was in the newsletter all week. Just a very, very attractive example. Uh, seven, early 1730s probably, uh, but lovely soft colors. Uh, so check that out. It's up to about 10,000. And uh, this is something that Bric-a-Brac has up. A nice uh, a Long Con Celadon uh, 15th century uh, uh, 15, early 1500s, rather, incense burner with the crosshatch pattern on it that you've seen so many times. You see the same pattern on bases, too. But nice soft green celadon grays, glaze. It has a later lid to it, but the lid is top quality. Uh, I should point that out. That is a superb lid. That was a very expensive lid to have made in its day, and it probably had a, a very fancy uh, uh, finial on it. I'm not sure if this is the original one. It might be. It might be. It looks like it fits in there. But very nice jade finial. Okay, the, the finial on this is probably worth four or five hundred bucks, at least, and it's up to twelve hundred thirteen dollars. It's an attractive package, and uh, it closes on Sunday. If you're a Celadon buyer, you want to check that out. That's a nice one, and um, uh, but go over it thoroughly. To make sure you like it enough. All right, now on to this was that that who form vase that had. This is a really unusual vase, and the reason it's unusual is is that is it has a, a more of a traditional Chinese famille rose, upper and lower section, um, uh, clouds and so forth above the water, and then down below the midsection are fish. All right, so it transitions over. But in the middle is a European landscape scene, which makes it very unusual with uh, cows and castles and all this. You, see, you saw this sort of grisaille decoration and sepia decoration on export porcelain of the first half of the 19th century. And here you're seeing it on this very unusual vase and in the upper half, you have dragons and clouds and all this activity. And at the bottom, beneath beneath the waves, you have all the fish and crustaceans and, and all this other stuff going on. Um, um, just really interesting pot, nice gilding around the top of it. 
And it's up to $1,530. It closes later today. It will be in the newsletter. Uh, we'll try to get the video up quick enough and get the newsletter updated quick enough for you to see it. And uh, I think this is a wonderful thing. And if, 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 if somebody can buy this for under $2,500 or so, dollars, you get a very, very nice buy on your hands. I think that's a lovely and uh, very unusual. It's just very, very unusual. I don't know how else to say it. And uh, then over to uh, here. These are closing um, on Saturday. Is that pair of who formed Celadon ground bases with the, uh, 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 the, the, the flowers and the, the lotus blossoms and all this? And has the, uh, I think it's a Republic period base. As I said last week, it has, it has Guangxu marks on the bottom. But the Guangxu marks look, don't look right to me. They look too widely spaced, too close to the foot rim, and um, more, more indicative of Republic period work. But still, very, very nice pair of vases. They're up to 1,359, and I, I ex expect they'll probably bring a bit more toward the end. But um, I don't think they're actually Guangzhou, but but they're beautifully done. And um, you know, but but if you if you're serious about buying them, if they're Guangzhou, they're worth 10 or 15,000 if they're Markham period. Um, and I expect these will probably bring two or three thousand somewhere in that range. Maybe more. Who knows? Somebody might get excited and pay the whole pay the whole Guangzhou price. You never know. All right. And, and that's about it for the week. If you enjoy the videos, give us a thumbs up, leave a comment, uh, come over to bitamount.com and subscribe to the weekly newsletter. Check things out. And uh, we do this every week. All right. Hey, listen, have a great weekend. And uh, we're up here in the mountains where it's very, very chilly. And I'll be here for a few more days relaxing. I, I needed a rest. And uh, we'll, uh, I'll see you all next week. All right. Thank you.